On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're taking you to rural Georgia to meet Leslie and Sam Graham, who a few years ago uprooted their lives. They sold their dream house and left their hometown of 40 years. They bought a sprawling 35-acre fixer-upper property that they've been transforming into their family compound, and it's still a work in progress. There's a cottage, two barns, and a church on the land. So come along with us as we tour this incredible property and introduce you to the Graham family. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Leslie. I'm Sam. Welcome to our home in Georgia. Come check it out. We're so excited to show you guys around. Hi, I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles. Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, I'm Leslie Graham. I'm Sam Graham. And we are coming to you from Georgia, about an hour outside of Atlanta in the country. So in 2020, the world was definitely different. Um, and I was watching a lot of Hallmark and just really deep diving on Zillow and came across this sort of wacky property that I sent to Sam on the eve of Thanksgiving. So I'm sitting in the dentist office. I've got like the technician in my face and she sends me this picture and it was just absolutely gorgeous. And I'm like, we have to go see it. We have to go by this place. So we called my friend Christina, who was our agent, and she was out of town, as you are on Thanksgiving, and we drove out here. The agent didn't, I mean, I feel so bad looking back because it was a holiday, but she was kind enough to meet us out here. And I feel like we had blinders on a bit, but we also didn't know that we would be buying this for our home. We thought this would be a really cool investment property because it was a wedding venue it had all these buildings and we just thought we could turn it into something cool and so that night or actually the following day on thanksgiving day we were under contract as you do That's, yes yeah. it's normal so we closed the following january and we were like how in the world are we going to do this an hour away from where we lived which was my hometown of 40 years the best small town, great food, walking distance, everything. It was really ideal. And we decided it would be really smart for us to uproot our entire life to the middle of nowhere, which is exactly what we did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it took us about 18 months to renovate the house that we're sharing today. And it has been quite the journey because we weren't originally going to move out here, but about three months into the project decided we would move out here and we sold our house and we haven't looked back, but we have, we have looked back. <laughs> Some more um, than others. <laughs> sometimes we have looked back, but we are excited. It's an adventure every single day. So our property is 35 and a half acres. Uh, we have a seven acre lake on the property that's full of bass and all kinds of fish. There is a chapel, there is a barn, there is a guest house, and there's another building we call the party barn. Um, so this place, it used to be a wedding venue so folks would get married in the chapel, they would have their receptions in the party barn, the bridal suite would get ready down in the cottage, and it was a whole full thing. 
but we knew pretty much from the get-go that we did not want to do weddings. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, how do we make this work with our life, which we're still <laughs> figuring out. <laughs> uh, but this is such a cool story. I had shared a video on TikTok actually that went viral, which is always so surreal. And I get this email with really, it was kind of a generic, weird looking email. <laughs> I don't even think it had a subject line, but I opened it, which is a miracle in itself. And our, our new friend, Jim, reached out. He's actually the grandson of the original owners. And he wanted to tell us about the history. So that Friday, we had, a, not a FaceTime, but we had a call with Jim and he told us the craziest stories um, about his grandparents sort of carving out the lake and how they used to stay in what they called the tenant house, which is what Sam was talking about as our guest house that we're working on right now. And this house in this room used to be a secret sort of underground supper club for politicians and even a local celebrity, Susan Hayward, um, was living here during that time nearby. And they would have steak and onion rings and cocktails and come to find out it was during the time when it was a dry county. So it was sort of a, you know, risque sort of fun hidden gem yeah, for so the this, locals. This would have been back in the late 40s, mid 50s, and the county we're in now was a dry county. So they would have local celebrities come out and just sort of the local politicians come out and have, was it steak and onion rings and cocktails? Yeah, just to get around the dry county laws. Yeah, so that's a pretty fun story. And we've connected with Jim and become friends. So they are going, him and his sister want to come and visit. So we can't wait to have them out here. All right, welcome to our music room. This is the front of the house. It was going to be a sleeping porch, but I never built the bed for it. So we turned it into a music room. Yes, so this space is really special to us because Sam is a musician. Our oldest daughter is musically inclined. She did not get that from me. Mm. And Sam spent hours meticulously painting wood floors that we put down in here. Originally, we were gonna use tiles that I bought that were a splurge. And this is something to remember when you're renovating your building is the width of tile. <laughs> so the tile was too thick for the doors to open. So we had to regroup. And so we got some really affordable glue down wood flooring before anyone comes at me for painting the floor <laughs> because I have heard it on Instagram a lot. Yeah, and there's a concrete slab under there. So we really, it was either tile or cheap glue down floor. We went for cheap glue down floor yes. and we painted it. So Sam did this sort of Harlequin floors and this is the green that we have throughout the house. And so it's fun that it's all over the walls. We also were able to raise the ceiling in mm -hmm. here, this was originally covered in rock that we mentioned that we had to take off of the house. We had to take it off in here as well uh, in order to find the termite damage. And we left the exposed shiplap. All we did was repair a bit of it that was, you know, destroyed. And we also left the beadboard that we found when we removed the ceiling. So we love it in here. It's a fun way for people to come in and see something that's a core value for our family. So if you want to paint your floor, don't do it. Hire someone else to do it. That's my no. number one tip. It's uh, the, the biggest tip that I can give you is to start from the middle and work your way out. Because mm -hmm. um, if, if you look too closely at the, at the outside of it, you can see I was kind of off a little bit. That ends up getting covered with trim. So it's totally fine. But yeah, start from the middle, work your way out. It seems to work out better that way. And I actually mm -hmm. used blue tape. So I shot a line down the center of the floor and then a uh, perpendicular line and then literally just blue taped the whole thing off and painted it all by hand. Yeah, Sam is meticulous where I would come in here and destroy it and then he would have to fix it. So <laughs> he did that. I would never even think to research how to grid it out, but he watched a ton of YouTube videos. There's a ton of YouTube videos on how to do this. and. You nailed it. Oh, and the other piece too, to get the size of the tile right, I just went to Home Depot and I bought like a really cheap vinyl tile that was 12 by 12. It was the size that we wanted. And I used that as my first template and then blue taped off of that. So this mirror is one of my treasured possessions. It was my Papa's. It is very, very heavy. We just had it moved because it was over at the cottage. We felt guilty having the movers that came last time do it at the end of the day because it is not fun. 
but we are so thrilled to have it here and we didn't hang it or anything because it's so heavy. So we just have it kind of leaning here. This is my selfie, you know, check yourself out when you come and go. <laughs> um, and then this piece we got at an estate sale, which is always fabulous. We have games in here. So card games and these little drawers, and then we have board games in the bottom and we love games. And then Sam hung all of these beautiful guitars up on the wall, which we love instruments as art. These are all fully functional guitars. In fact, this was the guitar that my mom bought for me when I was 14. And somehow it has survived all these years in which I have now gifted this guitar to my oldest daughter. So she's picking up guitar. Sam plays bass, guitar, yeah, piano. Yeah, I started on guitar. Uh, I started on piano and then Nirvana came out and I was like, I gotta be on guitar. So I picked up guitar and just kind of dabbled throughout the years. He was also in an 80s cover band. He's being very modest. I was in an 80s cover band. He is legit. He's a legit <laughs> musician. <sighs> yes. So Leslie had mentioned the mirror is her prized possession. The piano is my prized possession. This was my mom's piano. Um, that she had in Mississippi. She passed away in 2008. We brought it up here. I don't know when we brought it. Anyways, we brought it up here. It was down in our chapel for the longest time. And then when we had the guys move the mirror, they also moved the piano. So this is my number one prize mm -hmm. possession. And his mom actually was a blue ribbon cross stitcher. And she um, did the little bench seat here. So that is her work. And we love having it here. It's so special. So I love to mix and match sort of more modern with vintage because it keeps it feeling timeless to me. Like people don't know what, when you created it. Uh, but this is a uh, work done by my friend Hannah and just seeing her signature, I realized that we have hung it incorrectly. Uh, <laughs> but she is phenomenal. Hannah Joyner, I'm sure you could find her online. And she, this is an, my first original art piece. So I treasure that. The last thing that I would share is these lights are vintage schoolhouse lights that a friend of mine messaged me about to see if we wanted them. And I think they just really completed the space. So we're really excited to have those in here too. <laughs> well, when we moved here, the house was covered in rock and it was built by that gentleman's grandparents. And it was about 1100 square feet. So we actually toyed around with demoing the house because we thought maybe it would be easier to just build something but then when the prices of lumber and everything went crazy in 2021 we thought okay that would be nuts we've got to work with what we have so we worked with an architect and actually sam really helped build out the design of adding on sort of a primary wing so a mudroom a laundry room our bedroom and bathroom is what we added on, but we took it down to the studs <laughs> and we ended up finding a lot of um, termite damage, which is why we had to remove the rock and then we replaced all of the siding. It was a massive undertaking and this guy did so much of the work with my dad um, because it was so hard to get people out here because it is so remote, um, but we had incredible contractors that also helped bring it all together. But it was a massive undertaking for sure. Well, and it's like Leslie mentioned, the house was covered in stone and we started taking down drywall and we would find, oh, these studs are completely eaten up by termites. And every wall we opened up was like that. And we unfortunately found out the only way we were gonna fix that is if we took all of the stone off of the house. So we took down, was it 17 tons of stone that we had to remove mm -hmm. from the house and then re-brick from the outside so that we could get was it like 80% termite damage? So we had to repair really the extensive amount of damage from the outside because it was just, just so bad. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna repurpose the rock for gardens that we wanna create this spring. So we're gonna be able to reuse it, but definitely it looks completely different than when we bought it. So we would love to show you guys our living room. Come right this way. Okay, so I would love to tell you about the fireplace. So we had the same rock that was on the outside of the house and that was in this music room on the walls was also on the fireplace. They were really into it. We found out through our friend Jim that it came from Stone Mountain, which is very cool. It was granite. However, it wasn't the vibe that we wanted in here. So we ended up taking it off. Sam took it off and we found this sort of cool exposed brick situation, but the brick was too... 
it was one of those moments when, it was one of those moments like when you pull something off the wall and there's something even cooler behind the wall and we were super excited because it was original brick mm -hmm. and we were stressing about how we can incorporate the brick into the design but the problem that we had was there's a yes. gap behind the wall there yeah. and so the brick kind of tapers up and there was no real way to fill that in without it looking super weird. So we ended up sheetrocking around it so that it would be flush with the coffered ceiling and then we had someone, a genius woodworker, mill guy, make this sort of more traditional mantle which we painted again green. And then these Delft tiles are from Reg, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's R-E-G-T tiles. And they were flown over from Europe and they're so special. These are like potted hydrangeas is what I think it is. And I love them so much and they are very, very special. That was a splurge. <laughs> we'll go ahead and tell anyone that's gonna Google that. And then we ended up using for the threshold, we ended up using leftover countertop from the laundry room to do that. So that was an amazing budget saving situation. The andirons and the screen and the tools were also an estate sale find. Yes. Sometimes she drags me. This was actually the cool one. It was uh, the oldest lived in residence in the town we came from. So it was actually really cool to go in and look and see all their, all their trinkets. And they also have green everywhere. So I feel yes. like that was like a hidden inspiration. Yep. But we got the mirror from there as well. And it's so beautiful. I love that I get questions about that a lot. And so that's the fireplace. So we are in the middle of decorating for Valentine's. I love the holidays and my, my youngest daughter loves the holidays. So any excuse, I found this bow garland, which I think is very over the top, maximalist, fabulous. <laughs> and I think it would be fun year round, but Sam probably won't go for that. So here it is for Valentine's Day. Okay, so these chairs were actually, my friend and neighbor Stephanie sold these to me for a song. She was our neighbor at our last house. Very grateful they did not work in her house because I love them. This rug was my grandparents. And so we feel very blessed to have most of our vintage rugs came from my grandparents' house. We love them so much. And then this chair was my mom's and it's wasn't originally here, but we have loved having the extra seating. And then this sofa was from a Home Depot collaboration that I did many, many years ago with my friend Anna. So Chief has his little cozy corner with his little toys and his bed over here. And we love this. It's Harry Barker. People ask all the time for cute dog beds and I think they have really cute ones. So he loves it. Oh, right <laughs> on cue. He's a paid actor. Way to go. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so this was not here originally and neither were these doors. So mm -hmm. this was all just little small windows. So we turned them into a set of three doors. Aesthetically, I love them, but also we really needed to get more light into this room uh, because we added the porch. And so the porch kind of darkened it in here a bit. And then these bookshelves were custom done by my a family friend, Mark, and I think he absolutely nailed it. I just wanted it to feel really cozy and collected. We love books and in many houses have struggled with homes for books. So it is fabulous to have all of that storage. So when we were renovating, we ended up finding some little treasures from around the property. But this was in one of the hydrangeas and I just think I love the blue ribbon in there. It's, I love birds so much. And then you want to show And then I was one? hiking um, through the woods one day and you know, we have a lake in the back of our property and found this basically fully intact turtle shell just sitting just kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, those are hot items. I see them at Scott's. There we go. <laughs> Literally falling apart as I'm touching it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I don't believe in perfect bookshelves. I like them messy and, you know, collected and we have all the things in here. So it's fun to look around and you never know what you'll find. Because <laughs> you oftentimes can't find anything. <laughs> <laughs> My upbringing is maybe a little bit different. My parents, to see, my dad was 55 when I was born and my mom was 42. Sam's a miracle baby. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he is. Um, so my dad fought in World War II. So this was his trunk that everything that he had stored from the war, he kept 
in this trunk. And unfortunately, so they lived in Mississippi and Hurricane Katrina flooded everything that was in the bottom of this trunk. So there was lots of paperwork that we lost, yeah. uh, lots of photographs that we lost. In fact, we had a photograph of my grandmother who was born in 1896. We had a photo of her in there along with some of her World War I papers. Um, some of it survived, some of it didn't, but his uniform survived. Um, some of the, uh, his uh, GI belt survived. So we've got some of his stuff from World War II, but that was his trunk that he stored all of his war stuff in. So my grandfather, is an artist and we sadly lost him a couple of years ago and it's one of my greatest heartaches in life and I'll try not to cry, but he was a watercolor artist and he did this piece and several in the kitchen and they are my treasures. And so we're so grateful to have his, his work here. This chair came from my friend Krista. She is a total amazing collector and they were cleaning out a warehouse, which I felt very lucky to be invited or to know about the warehouse sale. So I got this chair from her. This came from Scott's Antiques. It was on a porch. Um, the lady, the dealer was selling it and I, I just am obsessed with the weird colors and I love orange and green together. So very happy to have that in here. And this is Sam's desk where he'll whip out his laptop and you know, we tuck all that stuff away. We try to hide technology as much as possible. So this is for our girls who are outgrowing this phase, but I have, you know, most of the toys I do not care about, but we love the mice. And so the mice, we love mice that are not real in our house. <laughs> and um, this is their little mouse house. And so when my niece and nephew come over, they can have something to play with that's more their age. So I love it. It's very sweet. So the beams were actually here, but they were a very dark, almost ebony wood. And so we added in the, I think they call it V-groove. Is that what they call mm -hmm. that? V-groove um, between the beams to add some more texture. We brightened it all up with paint. These floors are original and we love them. They're red oak. This is my favorite stain, which is half special walnut, half early American. It's just this very great, timeless, warm wood color. And I try never to do super dark floors because they show everything. So this is my happy medium, honey, beautiful stain. There were several projects that Leslie, or several additions or change orders that were brought up that were, I thought, what are we going to do here? How do I how do I say no as gently as possible? Um, but what I have learned, and this is not just the the guy who wants to stay married answer, she's always right when it comes to design elements and additions and change orders. As annoying as it can be to paint and repaint and change everything again and again and again, she's almost always right, and it's almost always the right thing to do. So. Um, that's not just the brownie point answer. That's, that's the truth. I paid him to say that. I <laughs> bet you would say the music room floor was the most challenging or what do you think? Uh, that was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. I mean, stuff like painting, painting checkerboard on hardwood floors. I mean, it's not hard. It's just really tedious it's and hard. just takes a really long time. But with that one, I wasn't upset about that because that was, I, I saw the vision. I thought that was gonna be really cool. Okay. So I was kind of into that. I feel like he has, you know, it's like after you have a baby and you forget everything. <laughs> I think, you know, we both have done so many home things. We have flipped a few houses now. And so you forget pretty quickly, but I think the, that was pretty, pretty um, time consuming. And then also we lost, the ceiling of the kitchen. We put in the kitchen in way too early and had the roof exposed and a crazy storm came and completely destroyed the ceiling, not the cabinets, praise God. Um, but we were not planning, we had already paid to have popcorn ceiling removed on that ceiling, which is depressing, but it was such a happy accident because we were able to vault the kitchen ceiling because of it. Um, but Sam and my dad ended up taking down all of the random rafters and you know y'all put up that trim didn't you in the kitchen mm -hmm. putting up the trim in the kitchen it was a huge huge project so that was one of the happy accidents that that took place was uh so our roofers were not able to get out and completely make the roof watertight we had a massive storm coming 
And so this is, we were living down in the cottage or the tenant house, the guest house. We were living down in the guest house um, while, this was, while the renovation was taking place. And so Leslie comes in the door, just kicks the door open and is just I did sobbing. Not kick the door open. Oh, it was like an FBI raid. It, <laughs> it was, was like, really bad. It was, it, I, and she was crying and I'm like, oh my God, someone's dead. <laughs> like there's been a death in the family. And she like between sobs was like, the roof fell. <laughs> and it was so sad, it's so scary. But we came over here and of course the roof had to collapse where the ceiling had collapsed. There's insulation and debris everywhere. Thank God we had covered the cabinets. Um, we had the wherewithal to cover that in, what do we even put? We put like some like leftover cardboard and like just tape and whatever stuff, but the cabinets were, were saved, but the floor, but the ceiling was just gone. But the cool thing was, is that exposed the rafters in the attic. And so Leslie having, being able to see that, we were like, wow, we actually really should just vault the ceiling. Cause it went from like a really tight kitchen that was maybe what, eight foot tall ceilings? Yeah, it was really low. To being this really nice expansive vaulted ceiling, which really opens up the space and ended up being just a really happy accident. All right, so before we show you the rest of the house, let's go check out the powder room. So this is the guest bathroom, but it's also our girls bathroom. So welcome to our powder room. This is also our girls' room, so it gets a lot of heavy traffic. So even though our girls are younger, they're not young, but they are girls, we still wanted this to feel like an adult space since people are gonna be using it that come over. So we wanted to really raise the sophistication level by adding this wallpaper, which my friend Maggie found. And it is absolutely fantastic, these pheasants. And um, this is from a UK, company called Pania and Sage. And then we were able to reuse the original vanity, which anytime you can reuse something in a renovation, it is a very happy day. And the marble top was already on it. We just took off the backsplash and added this chair rail. Actually, the chair rail was here. And we added the beadboard and painted it this green, which I love, which is Tate Olive. And then we added this subway tile, which goes all the way around the shower. We ended up taking out, they had sort of a prefab shower kit and we added a deep soaking tub and the tile. And, and then we also added this sort of retro penny tile. And then I love using vintage rugs as bath mats. And I just think it adds a layer of sophistication that I appreciate. And this was also my grandparents' rug and yeah, we added the brass fixtures and this is a medicine cabinet. I hesitate to show you. <laughs> oh, it's fun. Look at that. <laughs> so they have made this look like just a little episode of YouTube right here. But this is great for storage. And that came from Pottery Bird. All right, let's look at the rest of the house. Come this way and check out the kitchen. The heart of the home. Sam and I, uh, basically I stalked him really. So we were both on this, it was before blogs, it was called Live Journal. Anyone? No. Um, For the three people who, who know what that is. There will be someone that knows what Live Journal is, I guarantee you. <laughs> and it was sort of the MySpace era. And so it wasn't a blog, it was more like an online diary, so you can imagine how embarrassing um, that would be to find. Brutal. And Sam, my friend Christy, posted pictures of her and Sam and said, he's single. And so I went to his diary <laughs> journal <laughs> age and was like, he had this maroon, think like manic panic, almost like pink hair, emo hair. So bad. And I was like, is your hair naturally red? What? No, <laughs> there was not even a shred of chance that it looked natural. Um, and so we just started talking and then we ended up finding out that we went to the same church. So technically we met at church, but through my friend Christy, and through Life Journal. Through the internet 1.0. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the kitchen. This is my favorite place for us all to be together. And I'm so excited that we can share with you guys what the vaulted ceiling looks like. Um, we actually forgot to tell you a fun story that when we did have the exposed roof, we found a snake in the attic. So we're very thankful that he was evicted and that we have this air and this height and the light in here is just so dreamy. 
And this wood came from a lumber mill in Blue Ridge, Georgia, which was fun. And the guys, my dad and Sam drove out there to get the wood. And my favorite cabinet guys is a uh, Costilli cabinetry and they, Costia is an artist. And so my friend Maggie that helped me with the kitchen, we gave him sort of the bones of what we were looking for and he came up with this and I think we changed one thing. We moved the refrigerator to be closer to the living room. And so we reversed the oven and the fridge, but otherwise he nailed it, totally nailed it. And I love that it's sort of this English country style. And we did this creamy white, which I think is really nice. And then he also created these shelves, which everyone asks about on the coffee bar. And they're so fabulous. And I feel really lucky to have them. And I saw these shelves almost identical in Architectural Digest and was like, please, can you make these? So he did. And it's so great. We have all of our coffee things here, but I also love putting out we love East Fork pottery, so we've got a bunch of that, and it's just fun to be able to see all your pretty things instead of having them tucked away. But one thing that I have learned with many, many kitchens, my friend, Laura, who helped me with my last kitchen, um, her dad was the builder there, and so she you know, would help advise him on different things with design, but was to use drawers instead of cabinets <laughs> because you can store so much and it's so much easier to grab everything versus having to reach around in a cabinet. So that was a great tip from her. She lives in England, so she knows what I love. And we just recently got these copper jello molds to hang around the underneath the hood. My friend Danielle thrifted several of these and then I found one of them on eBay. And I just think they're so happy. And because we're in the country, one of the not so fun things is that we do not have natural gas. So my friend Allison told us about an immersion stove. Induction. Wait, induction. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> induction stovetop, which is preferred by a lot of chefs because it heats up very, very quickly and it cools off very, very quickly. So if you have to use an electric option, highly recommend this. It has been great. And then instead of doing a range, because again, we don't have gas, we decided to do a double oven, which I think has been... We use it all the time. Uh, yes, once a week at least. Yeah, it's been fantastic to have that. This is our first ever double oven, very fancy. And then these are appliance garages as well as storage. So we keep our vases and things like that up top that we don't use every day. Scared to show you what this might look like, but we have close very quickly. We have our KitchenAid in there. We have um, a blender in there and a bunch of other just electronics you don't necessarily want on your countertop. So that frees up space, but we also have outlets built in behind so we can just leave them plugged in and just pull them out. Has been very, very nice. I love a pot filler. I am new to the pot filler world, but it is so amazing to just have your pot when you're making your pasta and just fill it up with water. And we also use it to clean the cast iron to just like let them soak. We're big cast iron people. So that is a great thing to have. Another great thing to have in your kitchen if you can do it, are these built-ins for your cookie trays and all that sort of thing. Just get some all out of the way. I love organization, even though I'm not organized. So it is really nice to have. And then we did panel ready appliances, which has been an adventure because when we bought these products, nothing was in stock. So this was 2021. So it took us a year to get the fridge and a year to get the dishwasher. But it's so nice because they look like the rest of the cabinets. These are from Rejuvenation. I just love that it looks very vintage and lifted. Sam is definitely the chef in the house. <laughs> we would all be eating mixed nuts and frozen waffles if it were up to me. So we are so grateful for him. I'm not a baker at all, but yes, I do. He is. But I do love making sourdough bread. So, um, so yeah. he made that. He is a baker, despite what he says. He makes amazing sourdough, not sourdough, but homemade tortillas. I would say your tacos are everyone's favorite. Oh. Yeah, tacos, I love tacos. Chili, I'm pretty proud of my chili. Sam's a one pot meal kind of guy. I'm a bowl kind of guy. Like He's you can put bowl. your food meat in a bowl. bowl. Like bowls of meat, that's right. <laughs> that is specific. <laughs> bowls of meat, that's what I'm into. To Sam, but he also <laughs> makes every single morning 
sourdough bacon and eggs for me and yeah. the girls. And I look forward to that every day with my coffee. <laughs> it is a gift. So this light came from England once again, but this is Alice Palmer and Co. I get questions about this light constantly. She ships these beautiful pendants, these fabric covered pendants. And then I just used an Amazon, you know, kit to make it light up. This table, my friend Maggie found, it was from a boutique and they were selling it off. It was like a merchandising, you know, situation. And so I think it's so fabulous. But the first time we ate on it, it did break in half. <laughs> uh, but Sam fixed it. Sort I'm of. telling you, every day is an adventure. Okay, and then these chairs, which I am obsessed with, also came from that estate sale that we mentioned. And it's hand painted. They're so cool and unique. And I've never seen anything like them before. And then this china cabinet, my artist grandfather, who more of his paintings you can see in here, and his father made this china cabinet. So he was also into furniture making. At one point, their house looked like Versailles. So they went through several phases with home design, my grandparents. But one of the biggest changes we made was there was a giant metal building right next to us. So it completely obstructed the view of the land. So we were... So when she says giant, it was like 60 feet by 50 feet. It was... Yes. I mean, you could probably fit 10 cars in there. I mean, it was huge, yeah, massive room. And so the amazing men that helped us with our floors actually came and hand deassembled that structure, that building, and took it with them. Yeah. So they wanted Which to use it. Which was such a gift for us. Yes. They wanted to use it as their workshop. We wanted it gone because you really couldn't see anything other than the building. So they came and disassembled it That's in like, way. what, a, one afternoon and hauled it off? And yes. The only challenge with that was that it left a giant concrete pad, which was an enormous task to get rid of. Um, <laughs> so so. To, to remove that, we started, me and my father-in-law, we got a jackhammer and we thought we were just gonna use a jackhammer to take this thing up. We and were really ambitious. Like eight hours, and this was like in August, right? It was, it was like, very hot. God, it was so hot. And it was August and we're jackhammering for two days and we got like a, what, a tenth of it done. And we're like, this is not gonna work. Yeah, so we hired some. We hired an excavator I mean, who did it in five minutes. He was amazing. So ask for help. That's another ask tip. For help. That's ask another for help. I think the most important thing in a kitchen is the working triangle. So mm -hmm. making sure that you have very easy access to the sink and the stove and the dishwasher. Because when you complicate things in the kitchen, it makes it much harder to move around. So I highly recommend working with your cabinet maker, typically can help you with that, with creating a design. But I, I am not a, a big fan of DIY kitchen cabinets because of that reason. And even Ikea, we've done an Ikea kitchen, which big fans, amazing quality. They have software that helps you make sure you have a good working triangle. So just making sure that you have that in place before you even think about the design is so important. We cook, I cook a lot with cast iron. And just making sure that you have a place to put your cast iron that can hold it because they can get to be kind of heavy. And our drawers are what heavy, extra heavy duty so that they can hold the cast irons. Mm -hmm. I don't think a I don't think an IKEA drawer would handle that. So make sure if you're using cast iron that you've got something that can hold on to it. So yeah, so this room, it's not just a breakfast nook, it also doubles up as our dining room. And the cool thing about a round table is you can be shocked at how many people will fit at a round table. Mm -hmm. Um, a, a rectangular or a square table, I mean, they're fine, but a round table, you can get so many more people around it. Yeah. And everybody's looking at everybody. It just facilitates conversation and sort of being together. Yeah, and so when we host people, if it's cold outside, and it has been, because it's winter, this is where everyone hangs out. The kids will sort of hang around the island. We almost always have some sort of, my youngest loves a charcuterie board. So she will be putting <laughs> that together. But during the warmer spring, even in, way into fall, we love hosting outside as well. So we have our grill and our, our table set up outside, which it's nice to have the flow of both. I have zero say, <laughs> zero in the design. But do you want to have a say? Absolutely not. I don't think he cares. I don't care. I'm And I'm colorblind, so it really, I mean, I'm useless here. It just. Just give me the paint and tell me it's good and I'll just, I'll do it. He's a very good sport and I am grateful, but you also appreciate design and yeah. you like, you like fun things. I mean, I know like when a thing is pretty, I can tell, I, I like it. This is a good thing. But if you were to say, make this thing pretty, uh, I can't do that. That's not me.
I would describe our house as sort of a rambler. It's definitely sort of a ranch style home, but we've tried to add some European flair. I love English country style, so that's my main inspiration for the design inside and outside. But we also wanted it to be pretty traditional on the outside, so everything's a really soft, creamy white, which I love. And there's lots of pattern and color, which makes me happy. And I definitely stole a lot of ideas from the Brits. So we're grateful. I love the internet because I could see how they all decorate their homes. And it was very inspiring for me while we were getting everything together. Okay, so welcome to our bedroom. This is our sacred space, which we're constantly kicking our kids out of because they like to be in here, <laughs> which I love. But this room is so cool. I did not have a lot of things on my wish list because of budget reasons, but I really wanted to do this cool ceiling, which is faux. So we actually, because it's an addition, this was not here. So we had it insulated first. A lot of people are concerned that it there's no insulation, but we insulated it first and then they went back and did the woodworking around the ceiling. And I love this big light fixture, which I don't want ever to be turned on. <laughs> it is very <laughs> aggressive. I'm a lamp girl. I want low lighting. Sam's always like, I can't see. <laughs> but this bed was actually built by my dad and my grandfather, which is very cool. I am very sentimental. So I love all family heirlooms. And my brother and sister and I all kind of fight it out on who gets what. But this is Sam's Splurge was the fireplace. She really wanted this big uh, fireplace in here, which is so nice. Yeah, I really, I really wanted the fireplace, but when it came time to order it, I was like, give us the biggest one possible. Because I'm thinking like this big, like romantic, bigger, like home. English countryside fireplace, and it's way too big. <laughs> it's fine. It's we love it. He was like, oh wow, I didn't realize how big it was. Oh. But this is a double-sided fireplace that goes out to the outside, which is really great. And we have repeated the vertical shiplap in here to sort of tie it in with the kitchen. This is leftover limestone from a, another job project that my dad was working on that we were able to repurpose in our home, which I'm very grateful. And this was the stone that they patched into the laundry room that matched the tiles in there, which is very cool. But we love it in here because you can really see the water and the nature and you can see deer running through the backyard and it's just very peaceful. One other thing to point out is this estate sale rug. I love a bargain. And this was actually from a yard sale, but it was 60 bucks. It's got holes in it. I'm obsessed. It's huge, vintage. This credenza came from an estate sale and it's actually pretty valuable, but I got it for a hundred bucks. So I love a good estate sale find. And we used to be very anti TV in the bedroom people honestly until COVID and then we got really into it, probably too into it, but we do <laughs> love having it in here. Well, do not be fooled. While it is very neutral in here, I eventually want to put wallpaper in here. Gil Schaefer is one of my absolute favorites and there is a room that he did with Rita Koenig, who is, you know, I, I found out, out about her through original Domino Magazine. She's fabulous, but they did this house for I think the founder of a jewelry company, but it is my favorite house of all time. So this is where the inspiration of this room came from. And they did this pink, pale pink ditzy floral wallpaper. Sam is scared. We'll talk about that. <laughs> With these really cool <laughs> roll down matchstick blinds and these fabulous thick chunky curtain rods. So that's a goal. But right now it is very nice to have it nice and neutral. We don't yet have window treatment. So you're very much like you're almost like sleeping outside and yes. I love it. Um, and like Leslie was saying, the sun, the sunsets out here are insanely beautiful. The sun rises are incredibly beautiful. We get to see nature running around. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's wonderful. It's amazing. I will say when the moon is very full, it is like daylight here at night. So we definitely want window treatments yeah, at some point, for sure. but it has been so nice to just kind of live with the flow of the circadian rhythm in here. It's been good. So we have flipped and built and sold a lot of houses. And so that is definitely how we were able to keep 
going in the house in the real estate world, which I'm grateful. Um, some of that was good timing. Some of it was terrible timing. We have learned a lot about buying and selling houses. I have shared online um, in the blogging space and as a content creator since 2008. So I'm a dinosaur when it comes to the internet. Um, and so Sam and I work together doing everything now as a team. Um, but then, and he, he handles all of the admin. I'm boring, like the behind the scenes. Boring stuff. Yeah, I do all the taxes. unsexy <laughs> stuff, legal taxes, branding, all that. Yeah, not yes. even branding, paying the branding bills. <laughs> but then you're also an incredible artist, a musician. I mean, I dabble. I, I I have a leatherworking business where I make all kinds of stuff. I've been fortunate enough to do some stuff in the film world, um, which has been really fun. Um, but that has been kind of sidelined as sort of like a custom only job while we renovate 35 acres. Come to find out renovating 35 acres in multiple buildings is just about a full-time job. It is a full-time job. So Sam has been um, renovating our cottage for the last since August, that's what he's been working on. I would say the biggest tips for building new or renovating is always anticipate extra charges. It's yeah. you are never, ever, ever going to come in on budget. It's just not going to happen. And whatever your builder or your general contractor tells you the budget is, add at least probably 25% to that and then you're going to be close. Um, and the other tip I would give is treat your guys right. Like if, if mm -hmm. it's Fridays, um, order barbecue, like bring, and, and don't just do pizza. I mean, pizza's fine, but it, they get pizza all the time. Bring in barbecue, uh, go get Chick-fil-A. Like if you've got guys here that are working all the time, bring them some food. They, uh, that will change their day and that'll change sort of their willingness to, to go the extra mile for you if you go the extra mile for them. I agree. And we always had coolers um, yes. with, you know, Gatorade and water. I just think treating people as humans and really loving on people that yes. are loving on your home yes. means a lot. We became friends with a lot of the guys that worked out here and um, just such a gift, so grateful. Yep. I think to adjust your expectations and to really know what are non-negotiables because as surprises pop up, especially with renovations, which there all, always are, um, you really need to know upfront what you want really to make happen because all of those little things that you kind of want are gonna get pushed to the side and you wanna make sure that you can get your favorite things accomplished within your budget. And I would also say Pinterest is an amazing resource for staying organized, for having everything that you need in different you know, little folders so that if you are working with a builder or a contractor, you have everything to show them. I it, actually, you know what? Here's my number one tip is to print out photos of mm. what you want the room to look like, the plumbing fixtures and the instructions, staple them to the walls of the house so that you have less mistakes, less room for error. Because when you have visuals for the people that you're working with, they're much more likely to accomplish that for you versus just word of mouth trying to explain what you want to someone. That's a great tip. That was, I mean, we literally, we had what, 50 print offs and we were just literally stapling them to the walls. Like this is exactly what we want this to look like. And it really, it cleared up uh, so much confusion before it even happened. Sam and I are both bath people and we would love to show you our bathroom. Wouldn't that be it? Okay, let's stop that. Internet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I actually really don't care. That was totally way fine. too intimate. Totally fine. Okay. Now we would love to show you our bathroom. <laughs> so welcome to our bathroom so the main inspiration for this room was old edwards inn oh, yeah. in the highlands of north carolina if you've been you know it is very special but they do these very moody colors very natural moody colors and so i found this brown and i just thought it was so fantastic and we worked with costia again from costilli cabinetry and he absolutely nailed this. I showed him an inspiration photo and then he added these linen towers, which again, we sort of repeated those vertical lines in here as well. I found these off of Etsy, which I think is a fun place to find hardware. 
Okay, so these sconces I found and I just loved how they felt rustic and country, but still sophisticated with the lampshade. And one day I may switch out the lampshade for some little pattern or texture, um, but I do love them. And we have the one a dimmer, which is dreamy in a bathroom. All the dimmer, all the low lighting. We'll never turn this overhead light on, but it does exist. It's very pretty. And instead of doing a freestanding tub, we did an alcove because I wanted it to feel very cozy. And so we did this deep soaker tub in an alcove with this sort of marble top that matches the cabinets, the vanities. And it was a very big challenge to find a faucet that worked with this setup. And <laughs> We did, but we ordered like three, and I think we have all three if anyone is looking for one for their renovation. She's still in that drawer over there. <laughs> Pretty sure it's in the drawer in this room. And then we found these cool unlacquered brass hooks off of Etsy. So Etsy is a great renovation source because you can find really cool different things. And then again, I love using a runner in a bathroom because then you cover the whole room if you have hardwoods in a bathroom, which is really nice because then you don't have to worry about the water. And then in here, we did this sort of organic, natural colored penny tile. And we went all the way up to the ceiling, which I think is different. And I saw that on Pinterest, Pinterest for president. And um, I just think it's very cool, not something you see every day. And people have asked if it's hard to clean, and I really don't think it is. No, a good brush, it's not too bad. Well, brush, yeah. yeah. And we just matched the grout color to the tile, which I think has been nice. Yeah, the key to a successful and long-lasting marriage is two separate vanities. But poor Sam, because I end up taking over his as well. <laughs> He's being very modest because I do my hair sometimes over here because mine is too cluttered with all my beauty products because we're trying to look 20 when we're 40. Um, but it is so glorious to have the storage. The storage for toilet paper and bath products and towels and all the things. So it is it is a luxury for sure to have both. And we have literally had um, pedestal sinks as our mm. bathroom sinks before and that is a nightmare. If you're doing a reno, do not do that. Make sure you have a drawer <laughs> with your sink in some capacity, even if it's one drawer. So that was a lesson learned early on to not do that. But yes, it is glorious. So Leslie said, you know, we've, we've built new houses, we've renovated before. This house, hands down, is my favorite one that we've ever done. Mm -hmm. And it, it's honestly, it's hard to put a finger on why that is. Um, this home, it feels cozy, it feels warm, and it feels lived in. You know what I mean? Like, because mm -hmm. our first house that we bought, it took me probably six months to feel like it was our house. And then one of our houses that we renovated, I didn't ever feel like it was our house. You know, and I, that's a, maybe a weird thing to say, but it just, I never felt necessarily at home there. This house from from day one, from minute one, it's just felt right, you know, does that make sense? And then my second favorite thing about this house is the back porch. I just love it. It's a, it's a big wraparound porch. It wraps around the entirety of the back of the house and it faces the lake that's on the property. Um, and it's just, it's gorgeous. There's no better place to have coffee than on that back porch. And I would say, I love that the house is all one level and just that our girls are just right here with us. We feel the tenderness of time slipping away right now, having a high schooler. And it's just so fun to feel like we're all together. But I also feel like it's very cozy. I honestly, I, I know that high ceilings are very fancy and fabulous, but I've come to really love the lower ceilings, just feeling sort of held by the house in that way. And I'm most proud of this house because it feels the most like us, I would agree, mm -hmm. um, versus anything that we've created before. And I think a lot of that has to do with using wallpaper, which is a splurge, but I do love it so much. Um, and again, lots of color that we love. So yes, we, we really do love it. And I love being able to look out any window and see nature because look, growing up in the suburbs and the city, you know, you just don't get that. And so it is, it is quite a treat to look outside and see a bunch of turkeys or deer. So. Yeah, we have about 30 turkeys that will start on one side of the property and then just kind of walk their way over. 
and then they'll fly over our lake into the neighbor's property and then rinse and repeat and they just kind of make a loop which also by the way i don't know if you knew turkeys fly and it's actually kind of <laughs> scary because they're huge i didn't they know they're very flew. jurassic yeah i do think that home for both of us is we really crave creating a safe place for not only our family but for our friends and anyone that comes over we want it to feel warm and welcoming and like people can do whatever they want if they want to take off their shoes they can if they want to leave on their shoes they can we don't have a lot of rules it's never perfect because we don't want people to come in and feel like they have to be all proper um, which is very relaxing um, we try to create a relaxing environment <laughs> <laughs> try we try i you know we try to fight the neuroses and create a relaxing environment for anyone that comes over. Yeah, I was gonna say safe. Like that's the word that comes up is just safe. Like you want, like you're saying, like I want all of us to feel safe and at ease and peace. And again, like you're saying, like we love hosting, we love having people over. We just want people to feel like just a sense of safety and peacefulness while you're under our roof. Yes. And yeah, that's- And come as you are, come and as be you yourself. Are. Yeah. We're here for it. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.